Action, activate! Okay, let's try this again. Hi, I am Gazbot, better known here as the Gazbot Knight, and with me, well, no, not with me, is the Big Dog Defender would usually be here. Uh, real quick for those that were in the chat before, we did have some technical difficulties. I apologize for that. We've restarted. Hopefully everything's working out now. Okay. Uh, Erzuki says, I can hear the Gazbot both in real life and online, and that was her arm on the garbage lid right there because she's also my technical advisor, deciding that an open garbage can might not be the best look for the show. Uh, so for those that were here a minute ago, sorry about that. Uh, Locker Game let me know that my mic wasn't working. I restarted. Everything's working good now. Uh, hello to the Immortal Red Fox, Erzuki, everybody else watching live. Live and on the recording later. Uh, as I said, the Big Dog Defender cannot make it today. Uh, there was something going on with the enamel in his teeth, uh, and he's paying some person to put metal in there. I think he called him a dentist. I wouldn't know, because I'm a robot, and I don't have to deal with such things. But apparently, that's what he's doing. So, uh, I thought about not doing an episode this week, but next week we're going to San Diego Comic-Con, so the episode next Monday will, at the very least, be late. Uh, right now, we're looking at Tuesday, although I'll let you guys know in the Facebook group for sure when we have that, if it's going to be Tuesday or Wednesday. But I didn't want to skip two Mondays in a row. So, you got just me, the Gazbot Knight. Uh, it's going to be a little light this week because, uh, as I said, I'm prepping for San Diego Comic Con, so it's mostly going to be news, a little bit of chat. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them out. It's a good time for that. Hello, the real Babu. Welcome aboard. Uh, the Myrtle Red Fox has respawned, but ha and Erzuki says, but has no gear. Uh, nice. Okay, so speaking of both Erzuki, well, let's, yeah, let's go to the show. Here we go. This is the normal setup. Uh, as you can see, I didn't have a chance to do any new art this week, so I'm rerunning the hits, and over there is the uh, mast rider I did last week. But across from me, where the big dog normally sits, we see this little headshot. Uh, before we started doing this show, I used to do a show on Twitch called uh, to Twitch Request Live, where I would take re sketch requests and just do them real quick live. Uh, and the big dog, before he was my broadcasting partner, was on there and requested Magna Defender with a dog theme, and that is what I did. So it's not a super finished piece of art, but I found it, and I was like, you know what, that'll be a nice little placeholder for the big dog because that's the big dog defender that is literally the big dog defender uh <laughs> and uh yeah so it looks like we got mortal red fox real uh real babu checking to each other erzuki and that is yeah big defender art it's not new but it's new to you guys hopefully so i'm gonna do something a little different since i'm going into news by myself instead of putting it up in the middle here i'm gonna go full screen and i'm just gonna kind of surf the internet i have my tabs all ready to go so the first thing I want to talk about with the news, I have a little rundown here so make sure I don't forget things. Before we get into the official Power Ranger news stuff, we have uh, Gazbot news. So this is my website. For those that don't know, I'm an artist among other things. Uh, and Erzuki, my tech advisor, recently revamped my website. So you can see I have a bunch of stuff here. But the main thing I want to draw your attention to is San Diego Comic-Con. As I said, I'm going. The big dog's coming. Uh, I'm going to have a booth in the small press at L11. If you're going, please stop by and say hi. That would be awesome to see some Action Activate pals come by and say hello. Uh, and yeah, I will be there almost the entire time unless I happen to step away from the table. And if I do, the big dog will be covering. He will be there intermittently because he's there mostly to have fun. I'm there mostly to work. So that's that situation. But we will both be there. And related to that, I wanted to tell a little story about Hasbro Pulse. We've talked about this before. I'm going to cut back to myself now. For those that don't know, yeah, Arisuki did do that. And Real Babu thinks it's foxy. So thank you. Uh, so I subscribed to Hasbro Pulse primarily because they had, well, I, I collect Star Wars toys and other things, but they had released the, the Lightning Collection for Power Rangers. And when it was coming out, they said, if you buy anything off our website, you get a free subscription to Hasbro Pulse, which includes, among other things, free shipping. So I said, well, I'm going to buy these figures anyway. So I bought one, got the free subscription for a year. Since then, I've used it and been kind of disappointed because many things I ordered directly from Hasbro wouldn't show up till weeks or sometimes months after they're out at Target, Walmart, other things like that. So I was getting them later. And sometimes things that I wanted were cheaper on Amazon at the same time. So I was very – I didn't pay for it, but even still, I was not happy with it until recently. Two things happened, and this ties back into San Diego Comic-Con. One is that if you're a Hasbro Pulse member, and if you are and you're going to Comic-Con, check your email, I got – 
uh, an invitation to apply to get on the Hasbro exclusives line, separate from the Comic-Con uh, thing that they normally have, just for Hasbro people, and I got... I got in, so I'm gonna have an easier line to get in. Either I or the big dog will get online and, and get our, you know, Power Ranger toys and other things to have. They have that, you know, the Zeo uh, Jason set, the Zeo Mighty Morphin set. Yeah, this is a solo Gazbot, Matt Kendall Claire. <laughs> it is unusual. The big dog had a doctor's dentist appointment apparently, so he couldn't make it. But I didn't want to skip, like I said, because next week we're gonna be running late as well. Um, but anyway, so I, that's the first Hasbro Pulse thing that's good, that I get to cut, not cut, but get in a different line that'll hopefully save me some time. And the other thing was I had a chance to get to this exclusive Hasbro party where they'd show new things coming out. You get free food and drink and all this stuff. And I got in and I got a little barcode saying, yeah, you get to go to this. And this would be after hours of the show. And I was like, that's awesome because I'm a Hasbro Pulse member. But they messed up. And I got another email a day later going, you know what? We overbooked. I'm sorry, you can't go. Why am I still smiling? Because they said to make it up to you, here's a hundred dollar credit. A hundred dollars, guys. Hasbro gave me a hundred dollars to spend on any Hasbro toys I want. Because I couldn't go to the party that was free anyway. So Hasbro Pulse has been a real roller coaster up and down. But right now I've landed at three hundred dollars worth of Hasbro toys. So I'm happy with them right now. <laughs> we'll see where it goes from here. But uh, yeah, if you do have Hasbro Pulse, definitely check your email if you're going to Comic Con. Uh, and if you're not going to Comic Con, check Hasbro Pulse anyway because those uh, a lot of their exclusives will end up on there. And I, I'm not paid to say this or anything. I'm just a fan, and this is what I'm doing. So I'm trying to share it. Uh, let me check chat real quick. Immortal Red Fox, you should have asked me to fill in. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it, it's. it's really seat of my pants here. I, I wasn't 100% sure I was going to do a show, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. Um, if I, I'm going to pick up my camera so I don't get sick, but I'm going to show you on the floor right there. You can see there's prints and things that I've been working on. It's a mess in here. There's buttons, pins, because I'm getting everything ready for the show tomorrow. So this was very last minute that I decided to go ahead and do it. Uh, but let me get back to the news here, full screen. So there's Hasbro. Um, and speaking of news that isn't official power well it is official power ranger news steve andrino who was in power rangers as babu obviously he just had an interview we did one with him but he did another one with the morphin network it's up on their facebook now i don't think it's on their youtube yet but i recommend you check it out it's a good time uh he he drops a couple little tidbits that he didn't drop for us so it's not exactly the same thing and you know support a hometown hero he's our buddy here and so uh you know give a little love back and i did watch uh that interview and he did mention both myself and the immortal red fox so you know he's a good man a good kaiju suit wearing man flipping back now to me haha <laughs> the gazbot i also did an interview this week uh mine was a podcast with fanboy planet uh and that's actually the guys from fanboy planet rick and derek and in the beginning that was rick doing the action activate call out and uh erizuki too late i'm sick <laughs> what? uh and uh so I, these are uh, caricatures I did of them uh, that I was commissioned a while back, and there's a picture of me looking like a doofus. And we talked for quite a while, and we talked about San Diego Comic-Con, my, my comic, The Hurry 4. We talked about Power Rangers, which they know very little of, to the point where I was talking to Derek, and I forget how it came up. We were talking about, oh, because the new uh, White Ranger is finally being introduced into the comics. And I was saying, oh, yeah, because the Green Ranger, the White Ranger, and he's like, how does that work? And I'm like, well, you know, it was Tommy, and he's been in it for like four seasons. And he's like, wait, there's continuity? And I'm like... Yeah, the first couple seasons were straight continuity, so I was dropping a little Ranger knowledge on them. You might enjoy listening to it. Maybe not, but there it is. That's what happened. <laughs> All right, let me cut back to me, and I feel like I've missed some chat. Let me itch my eye on camera. That's good. See, this is why it's hard to not have a partner, because I'd cut to him while I itch my eye. Now you get the full eye itching experience. Uh, let's see. Uh, dental appointments. Q likes to pick. Wait, oh man. Q likes to pick on Gazgees. I wonder, ah, you know, I deserve it, I'm sure. I don't know what I did, but I'm sure I deserve it. Let me turn off that little chat there. There we go. Uh, you are welcome. Uh, Bat Boo, you are welcome. Immortal Red Fox, the Dark Lord is nigh. He is nigh. Shinakami. Um, and I can declare it's called Spousal Privilege. Okay, there you are. I did not know that. Does that mean I could pick on you back? Uh, we'll, we'll find out later. But now, we've uh, kind of did our family catch up, our little... Oh, apparently no. It doesn't work. <laughs> We've kind of done our family catch-up, uh, and, and uh, let's get into the actual like worldwide news of Power Rangers. And the first thing I'm going to talk about, oh, I guess I should probably show you, huh? Let me go back. This, As I said, it's a new thing, the full screen. GameStop. Why am I showing you GameStop? Well, actually, you know, before I get into this, I'm going to come back to myself anyway. This ties into family. When I say family, I mean me <laughs> or, or, or Steve or Matt or any of our regulars. Uh, this is about a GameStop sale, which I'll talk about in a minute. But how I found out about it was one of those weird moments, which was kind of a little bit weird in the moment. And then I was thinking about it right before I went on air today. 
like let's flash back to you know 25 years ago i'm living at home uh in the upstairs in, in red bank new jersey uh of my father's house and I'm, I'm watching this crazy show power rangers and you know whatever just not doing my homework or whatever i'm supposed to be doing if somebody had come to me, the guy who had lived in New Jersey uh, his whole life, mostly up to that point, and had no interest in moving anywhere or doing anything active, that, hey, in 25 years, you're going to be living in California. You're going to be on top of a mountain like that takes you two hours to get to the top of, straight hiking up in the sun. And you're going to have a device. It's a cell phone where you can actually get phone calls in the wild, and you're going to get a phone call on top of that mountain. I know who's going to call you. That little blue monkey guy, Babu, that you're watching on TV. He's going to call you on top of that mountain. I would have kicked him out of a window because I'd assume they're an evil monster. But no, they'd be telling the truth because that is what happened this weekend. I was hiking up a mountain, which isn't something I do that often. It was a mistake. It was much more difficult of a hike than I thought. My phone didn't work the whole time. It cut in, and it rang, and Steve Andrino, the real Babu. Hey, guys, they have an awesome sale in GameStop. So now that's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> I know that's a weird lead in, but it was just one of those life moments that like afterwards I reflected upon, like no one could have predicted that. No one in a million years could have predicted that. So let me go to the new full screen. Uh, so this is the GameStop sale. It, it's already been going on. So, you, you know, your chances of catching it aren't great as it was. Um, but what they're doing is they're clearing out all their legacy stuff and a lot of it for super cheap. So if you look at the Falcon Zord here, it's going for 20 bucks. Uh, the figures are still all roughly retail. The, the Dragon Egg are still 80 for some reason. Xeonizer, 20 bucks. Um, the Real Babu, I know he had posted about this. He got the Xeonizer, he got Saba, and he got, uh, I think, the Ninja Megazord for 20 bucks each. Now, here's the trick. You could order them online if they're available at a store near you and you have to go pick it up. You might have to drive a bit. Or you could try going into the store and see if they'll honor the sale online. I have had zero luck so far, but I know other people, like I said, uh, The Real Babu has. So it is worth trying, especially if you're in a different uh, geographic location than me here in the Bay Area of California, you might have better luck. So GameStop, blowing that stuff out. If there's anything you were thinking about getting, now is the time. Uh, some of these you know, are about retail, but many of them are well, well below retail. Uh, let me go back up to the one shot here. And check chat. Let's see. Uh, Matt Kendall Claire liked the store. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Real Babu. Driving home from getting more merch. Falcons Zorn Legacy Morphers. And another Sob Zord. Wow, you are having way better luck than me. I guess it's my fault for being on a mountain and, and getting ready for San Diego Comic Con. I should just be hitting GameStops nonstop. But that's proof that it, the goods are out there to get. Uh, Mortal Red Fox. All the Green Ranger stuff is still full price except for the Morpher. Actually, the Green Ranger Morpher is the main thing I need. If there's any, if there's any lovely action activators out there that find one and want to slide it my way, I'd be, you know, assuming it's for 20 bucks, I'd be happy to pay them back. I have the White Ranger Morpher and the Standard Morpher, and I even have a Zoo Ranger Morpher, but I don't have the Green Ranger Morpher, and I missed it. And I and I felt I never wanted to pay full price because I already had three. But if somebody could find it, I would love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Check it out because uh, deals are happening. So let me see. What was the next story? Okay, so here we go. Not that. Not that. This one. Okay, this just dropped, I think, today. I'm looking at IGM, but it's being reported all over. Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles comic crossover announced. Um, this is going to be between Boom and IDW. Two different companies own the rights. And here's the cover. I like the art. It's looking pretty good. I think it's a different cover artist, an interior artist. But here's something interesting, too. Uh, they're going to have a series of helmet-themed variant covers, the painted ones, kind of like the Go Busters we were talking about last week that's going to be a San Diego exclusive. And I wonder if they're going to have Ninja Turtle helmets, I, 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 or if they'll have Power Ranger helmets with Ninja Turtles in the reflection or something. It definitely, like, I'm excited about this in general, but the helmet covers is where I'm really letting my mind race. What do you guys think? Is it going to be, because it's, it's all the six main Ranger Rangers that we've already got helmets for and variations for. So it would be odd if it was just the same thing. Is it possible they're going to give us Ninja Turtle helmets? Like a like a Michelangelo with like orange or or do you think it's just going to be reflections? I don't know. I mean, it says it's going to fit in that same set where it's like a painted kind of holding the helmet. It'd be interesting to see. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited for this. I, I actually sadly never read the Justice League versus uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers that came out a little while back. I always meant to. I just haven't got around to it. But I'm a bigger Ninja Turtle fan than I'm a Justice League fan, so I will be hopping on this for sure. Uh, let's see. Immortal Red Fox wants Steve to save a Saba for him. <laughs> uh, already, uh, Immortal Red Fox already on a Turtle Ranger. Nice. Um, 
And so, from what I understand, the time frame is going to be when Tommy was still the Green Ranger, and it's set in sort of semi-continuity with the comics, although maybe a little bit earlier in time than Shattered Grid and all that stuff. But again, uh, they don't even have a release date that I could find. This just got released, but I'm psyched for it, and I hope you guys are too. And if they have any sketch covers, I'll be getting those and putting my own art on them, so uh, look out for that as well. Okay, so what's next? The next thing, Toy Wizards, which I think is actually where uh, Steve... Andrino, Mr. Babu, found the the uh, the GameStop sale that he told me about on the mountain. On the mountain. They are talking about the Power Rangers San Diego exclusive Comic-Con Green Ranger Razor. I'm not super into this. Uh, I don't, I'm don't. i not a big fan of Razor scooters, and it's. I think we talked about this a little bit, too. Like, If you use it, it immediately loses its value, so it's kind of an odd exclusive, but I'm sure there are collectors. Now, at the show, if you could get it, it's going to retail for about $80, but they're doing a giveaway, uh, and that's what this post is all about. If you go to the Toy Wizards Facebook page, uh, it's basically like a like and share sort of situation where you kind of say, yeah, I shared and whatever, and you entered to win. So it doesn't cost you anything, and you could win this exclusive either to put on your shelf and look at or to ride in Ruin or to sell or give away, whatever. But I figured I'd let you guys know there's a chance to get free Power Rangers-related San Diego Comic-Con exclusive swag by going there. And all the links to all this I'll be putting in the show notes in uh, when I put it up on YouTube later. Okay, so... On that same tip, actually, let me go back to the one shot and see if I miss anything in chat. Um, oh, I just did. Let's see. Erzuki. If we get that Razor scooter, I'm going to ride it back and forth behind Gaz whenever he's doing the show. We'll look forward to maybe that. Just see a little V. Whoo. Wah. It's worth a time. Now, okay, now I kind of want it. Now I kind of want it. I, didn't, I wasn't particularly interested in it until I heard that, but now I guess I better try to win it. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys try to win it too. I think they have more than one, so it's possible I could win it and you could win it as well. So that would be the best situation. Matt Kendall Claire, uh, oh, cue that'd be funny, especially because there's carpet behind me, so it'd be really, be like, mm, mm, like really having to work at getting that thing moving. All right, let me see. Now I also want to take a sip. So normally I'd be like, hey, big dog, tell them what's coming up next, and then I would do this, and then I'd go, oh yeah. So you see, it, I've definitely gotten into a rhythm of having the partner, and now you see the behind the scenes. I'm itching my eye. I'm drinking water. And you know, oh, I mean, this is this is a lubrication coolant fluid because clearly I'm I'm not a human, so that would be silly. Uh, but moving on from Toy Wizards and kind of keeping it in the same, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Power Morphicon, sort of. Power Morphicon did announce its dates for 2020. Uh, you can check that out. I don't think they're selling tickets or anything, but it just announced the dates. Um, but that's not what I'm talking about. Power Morphicon is run by a guy named Scott Zillner. He is also one of the Toy Wizards. He was the guy in that picture I just showed you. Uh, let me actually go back to that just for reference here. This guy, where is he? This goofy, this goofy guy right here. That's Scott Zillner. He runs Power Morphicon as well as a bunch of other conventions, and he is one of the Toy Wizards. So that's we're jumping over here. And what we're looking at now is at San Diego Comic-Con, Power Morphicon always has a booth. And they're sort of advertising their event. And I think they sell shirts and a few other things. And they often have Ranger actors at the booth. Now, I'm not sure how many they normally have, but this year they're having a lot. And why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you this because if you're going to San Diego Comic-Con, you're going to have an opportunity. Excuse me. Uh, you're going to have an opportunity to maybe see some Ranger actors in a situation where they won't be necessarily mobbed as they would at a Ranger convention. Also, I'm going to be there... I'm mostly going to be stuck to my table. The big dog's going to be there. We may, one or both of us may have a chance to get over there and talk to some of these ranger actors, possibly on camera. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but if anybody has any questions, comments, things they'd want us to ask or say to any of these ranger actors, let me know. You can let me know here. You could put it in the Facebook group. You could put it in the uh, the comments on the uh, the YouTube page. I'll put the links right here. Um, I'll probably put this up later, as I said, at the Action Activate web page as well. I'm not the web page, Facebook page, with all the different actors. So you can see we've got Dwayne Cameron, Operation Overdrive, Mercury Ranger. He's going to be there most of the days. Also, oops, i got to switch thing. Also, uh, this one surprised me. I'm going to get his name mispronounced. Nikolai Nikolev from Jungle Fury, who is the White Rhino Ranger. He's going to be there a little bit on Friday and Saturday. I've only seen him at one other convention, which was Power Morphicon proper. Uh, he was in Daredevil Season 1, I believe, too, as one of the villains. done a few other things. But you don't see a lot of Jungle Fury people over here, so that's, that's surprising. Uh, and then 
we got Tracy Lynn Cruz, who we do see at a lot of conventions, but uh, I didn't expect her to see her at this one. But then again, I don't know what kind of selection process he uses or, or how this works out. But she obviously was Yellow Turbo uh, and Yellow in Space. I've met her. She's very nice. Uh, I've done some art, and she's signed some stuff and sent it to me. So, you know, if you have a chance to speak with her. She's out of the three. She Oh, actually, no, that's, so she's the only one I met. But I did meet Dwayne Cameron very briefly at Power Morphicon Express to give him a headshot I did of him. Uh, and he seemed nice as well. Uh, then we got Brennan Mejia, who I've met multiple times uh, and, and is quite a, a lovely gentleman and generous with his time. Uh, he will be there Saturday and Sunday. Um, he's also going to be at the Boom Comics booth, I think, too, so you could kind of try to catch him both places. But again, if any of these people interest you in terms of questions or comments or anything you might have for them, throw my way or, or put them on the uh, better, you know, like I said, comment somewhere the questions because there's a non zero chance that. I or the big dog will be able to speak with one or more of these people. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here's the big one. Austin St. John. They have him uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So every day except for preview night in the morning until the afternoon. They have him doing Zeo. They have him doing Mighty Morphin. I don't think he's dressing up, but I guess they're just advertising both his characters in case somebody didn't know both of them. But again, talking about big ranger actors, you go to a Morphicon or something like that. He is swamped. Good luck getting to see him. You go to San Diego Comic-Con. You probably have a lot better chance getting to talk to him, maybe have a few more minutes when you get the signature. So I always say if you go to a non-Ranger convention, that's the best time to see Rangers sometimes. Uh, also, we got Michael Coupon. He's only there for a few hours on Saturday. He's Time Force Blue, uh, and uh, I don't, I'm not sure what his schedule is. Maybe he's doing some other panels or something. A lot of times when they're at the booth less, it's because they're booked to do other things, but I'm just telling you about what's going to be at the Power Morphicon booth. And I think this is the last one, another big one. OG, Walter Jones, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, it's interesting they don't have him there with Austin St. John because I know that they're friends in addition to being on the show. So you would think that it would be cool to have them sitting there at the same time. They could hang out, but they're not scheduled at all the same time. Maybe they wanted to spread out like the Mighty Morphin goodness because that's sort of the big draw, the big seller. Uh, and I think that's it. Those those are the people that are going to be there. So we got Walter Jones, Michael Copan, Austin St. John, Brennan Mejia, Tracy Lynn Cruz, Nikolai Nikolev, and Dwayne Cameron. Kind of a good representation of a bunch of different eras as well. We have Mighty Morphin all the way up to uh, Dino Charge. So you have everything up to Neo Saban. Uh, the only thing we don't have is Beast Morphers, but that's that's pretty new. Um, so I'm impressed with the sort of spread of, of actors and timelines they have there. And once again, you know, throw it out there. You never know if we get to see one of them and we have one of your questions or comments, we might use it. So it couldn't hurt to throw it out there. All right, let me see what is next on the hit parade. Oh, you know, I think that's the end of news. That's the end of the news, unless anybody else has anything they wanted me to discuss. So what I'm going to do now is, well, there is one more piece of news. This is like the big news, I guess. So for those that don't know, there have been a few Power Ranger actor type fan films or crowdfunding things happening. Um, the biggest one I knew of previous to what I'm going to talk about was The Order. Uh, and Karen Ashley was very involved with that, and it had uh, Austin St. John and a ton of Rangers, a lot of them from Mighty Morphin era, but throughout. And that theoretically is still happening. It was funded through Indiegogo. I actually backed it, and it got its funding. It hasn't come out yet. They've, they've put out like, I got a shirt in the mail, and they put out a comic and a few other things, but I'm not sure what's going on with it now. Supposedly, there was one before that that didn't go anywhere. And there's been a lot of side projects where you see a ranger show up in somebody's YouTube videos or like, you know, two or three of them, like, like Jason David Frank and Bat in the Sun, a little bit more high level kind of stuff. And hold on, let me check chat. Uh, what kind of announcements do you think we'll get at SDCC? Mortal Red Fox wants to know what kind of announcements we'll get at SDCC. Uh, I assume you mean in terms of Power Rangers. Well, I f feel like they're going to have on-hand copies of the Lightning Collection Wave 2. We already know what they are, but I feel like they will have them. The only one we've seen so far is Beast Morphers Red. I think if they're smart, they would have announced uh, Wave 3 and maybe show it as well. Because the way they do Marvel Legends and Star Wars, especially Legends, they're like way ahead and it gets people psyched up. So for sure we will see examples of Wave 2. Probably the Walgreens exclusive, you know, things that are like coming up very soon they'll have. And they'll definitely announce Wave 3. I would like to see maybe even announce Wave 4. Uh, in terms of the show, I think they'll probably have a trailer for Beast Morphers Season 2, whether they're calling it Super Beast Morphers or whatever. Oh, actually, no. You know what? That's not true, because I forgot how far behind we are that we've only seen ep eight episodes. So if anything, it'll be footage from the second half of Season 1 of Beast Morphers, which is odd to say. Uh, and hopefully, maybe there'll be a little bit of a teaser news about the next Power Rangers movie. We know that uh, they're not continuing with Lionsgate. Uh, Lionsgate, was it? Well, whoever it was that made the last one. And they're probably not even ready to 
you know cast or anything like that but they might just have a poster that says like power rangers reboot you know 2021 or whatever just like a teaser for that i would expect that or at the very least talk about the fact that they're gonna make one that's that's kind of my expectation there um from Power Morphicon booth, they might make some official announcements of guests who are confirmed for Power Morphicon as well. That would be another thing I'd be... At. It was Lionsgate. Thank you, Matt Ken Claire. Um, so, all this is to say there is a new project. And it is put out by Bat in the Sun, who does Super Power Beatdown, who has done some uh, projects with Jason David Frank before as the Green Ranger, as the White Ranger. Uh, and they did even a crossover for the, the, the mobile game where Street Fighter crossed over with Power Rangers, and they did one of those. This is their most ambitious yet. They've been teasing it for a while. Jason David Frank, uh, Jason Font from Time Force, Johnny on Bosch, a few other rangers have been teasing it and showing pictures of them in armor that kind of had their color. And I thought it was just another fan film, not, not a fan film, another fictionalized version uh, of them as action heroes or whatever, but with a little bit more of a sci-fi bent. Then when I heard it was called uh, Legend of the White Dragon, and I put this up on the group, there's a picture of the helmet, and it looks kind of Power Ranger-y. I was like, is it possible this is sanctioned? Is it licensed? Because a lot of the stuff Bat in the Sun did at the time through Saban was official. And so my thought was no, then yes, and then they dropped the trailer. And uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, I'm going to show you the trailer now so we're all on the same page. Let me go full screen. Make full screen again. And I will shut up. This is about five minutes long, so I will just let you guys watch it and uh, make your own. Actually, you know what? I realize if I do this, I'm going to get flagged because I'm not trying to. I'll have to show it not full screen just so I don't get flagged on YouTube later. The target is heading for the south exit. I'll cut him off. Copy that. We have you surrounded. There's no way to run. I got eyes. Don't move. Let me see your hands. That's it. Easy. Don't move. Cover me. Already on it. Keep those hands right there. something to help us restore balance. The white dragon crystal. Your energy. Your blood is the key. Then why'd you attack me? Because we had to make sure you weren't a clone. You're wasting your time. I have nothing left to fight for. She's alive! Your daughter. She's alive. It's what your wife would have wanted. He has her at his citadel. If you're lying to me, you'll be the first one I come after. And if I'm not, you'll have found a reason to fight.
buddy, Jason David Frank, Johnny Young Bosch. We hope you enjoyed the <laughs> right? the Oh, I gotta of stop that. So, uh, yeah, I do think that looks pretty awesome, and I think it clearly is not a sanctioned licensed Power Rangers thing, but they're like, these are the Power Rangers in the future. They all have the colors they're supposed to have, they're all, you know, know each other and have this history. Uh, let me check chat, a few people said stuff while that was on, but I didn't want to interrupt. Um... Locker Gaming said, oh, back in Clary, Vox wants to hijack the teaser. He does. <laughs> uh, Murder Word Fox, Hasbro wants Transformers Power Rangers crossover. I would love that, except I remember the Power Ranger, uh, the Star Wars Transformers crossovers they did, and they were not very good. So I'd look at it, but I, I'm not sure how well that would be. Uh, Locker Game thinks it looks pretty dope. Matt Kendall Clare, uh, you and probably a million other Transformers fans. Matt Kendall Clare also thinks it looks good. Uh, and then Erzuki's making, I think he lost everything. And here's the point. Erzuki says, when you, you say you're not the only one who lost something, you take off your helmet, you better have an eye patch. Missed opportunity, hashtag. I agree. He just has a bit of a scar. It was a little disappointing. But I was trying to remember, Johnny Young Bosch is also in The Order, the other project I talked about that is still potentially in development. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I think his character in that might have had an eye patch. And maybe that's why they didn't do it. But then why not use another like character? Either way, it's a missed opportunity. I agree. Just give him, like something a little bit more a little bit more than that. <laughs> uh, let me see. The order. He does have an eye patch. Okay, let me show you real quick. Look at that. This is the order. That's Jenny Young Bosch. He's got an eye patch. And he's like, I lost my eye! So what we've learned is that when Johnny Young Bosch is in a Power Rangers themed film, he something happens to his eye or his face, and he's upset about it. But last time it was a full eye patch, so I guess they wanted to avoid it being too similar. But yeah, that's odd. I didn't think about it until uh, Erzuki made that joke. Let's see. Uh, Mac and Claire, uh, JDF never had the best memory as Tommy, so it fits with the lost thing. Uh, and then Erzuki says, white, definitely not a Power Ranger, dragon. Well, I mean, the Green Ranger, dragon, white, white dragon. It's sort of like the good guy version of Lord Draken, I guess, without actually, you know. I mean, it looks awesome. The, the armor and everything looks awesome. Uh, and he says, Emerald Reflex, he took everything from me. <laughs> Silence! Words have no meaning on a planet under the cape of war. Yeah, so... The the good news is it looks pretty good. The bad news is it's a crowdfunding thing, so it's a Kickstarter. I think they need something like what was it, half a million dollars? I don't even remember now. Uh, and but they're well on their way. But the idea is that if they get further than that, then they literally say they'll put in robot battles and stuff. So if they only get their base funding, it's going to be a lot of martial arts and action that kind of stuff. If they get more, then it'll get into the bigger, you know, more Power Rangery stuff. Um, I'll probably back it at a at like a, a lowish level where I could just get a copy of the movie and see how it goes because like I said, it, it, it I think be a, that it's Bat in the Sun it has a better chance of coming out than some of the other projects, but it's not the first Ranger actor related project to come along and the others haven't had the best track record. Um, that being said, that trailer is awesome and I think the the direction they're going in it is a lot more exciting than like the Order and some of the others where they're just they're still action stars but there's there's that fantasy element to it which is what most of us like. Uh, let's see. Erzuki, silence. Silence! White dragons have no meaning. On a plot line, under the cape of loss. <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> I've lost everything. He should. That should be all of Tommy's. Well, it, what, what is his name? It's not going to be Tommy. It'll be like Bami or like Tony. Tony, yeah. Instead of Tommy Oliver, it'll be like Tony, Tony Banana. Tony Banana has lost everything. Matt Kendall Claire appreciating Q's joke. Uh, I also do. Um, but yeah, so that that's kind of the big news. There's a lot coming out, but that was the big one. And I think that sort of wraps up all the things I had on the schedule. Let me cut back to uh, see. Hey, Big Dog, do you, do you got anything to say? Woof, woof. Welcome to the Big Dog Knowledge Zone. I'm going to tell you all about dentistry and how my teeth got cleaned. No, that's all right. We don't. That's that's the, that's fine. We don't want to hear that. Woof, woof. Are you sure? It's pretty good. You don't sound like yourself today. I you. It's a weird woof, 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 woof. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you. No thanks. Uh, woof, man. When he goes to the dentist, it's it's like he's a whole different person. But anyway, uh, let's see what's going on with the Rangers show. Back to the basics and home. I think uh, if anybody has any questions or anything they want to chat about, I'll, I'll stay on for a little bit more. But that's kind of all I had going on. Uh, and next week, like I said, we're probably going to be running a, a little late. We're not going to film Monday for sure because I originally said I thought we would because the convention's over Sunday but we're going to be on the road Monday so unless 
we get a good enough signal and then it'll be in the car, me holding the camera and the big dog driving, like, I don't think that's going to happen. So Tuesday would be the earliest, possibly later. Like I said, watch the Facebook page or the Gazbot page for announcements and I will let you know. We will have one next week for sure. And it will mostly be a wrap up of San Diego Comic Con, talking about what we did, what we saw, all the Ranger related goodness and everything else. And that'll be next week where the big dog will be back. Um, but for this week, oh, let's see, Matt Kendall, oh, wait. Ami Tolliver. Oh, I like that. Ami Tolliver. <laughs> uh, Mortal Red Fox has a theory. Okay, let's see. What's the theory? I'll wait. You know what? I'll take this opportunity. While he gets ready to tell us our theory, I'm going to take a sip of water. In this case, Mortal Red Fox basically became my big dog. Oh, I'm waiting with bated breath. My breath is bated. Uh, Arizuki says when he wants to summon his giant white dragon robot, he plays a clarinet. <laughs> and it won't be like, dun, 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 dun. it'll be like, beep, bop, boo. It'll be all jazzy. It'll come out like, scat, scat, scat. And then it'll be like, ha. All right, Mortal Red Fox, let's see. I think we are on the cusp of Common Rider coming back to the States. It looks like, uh, looks at pick a Common Rider 01. Uh, is that is that the zero one? Is that the super new one that they just announced recently that looks super sleek? Um, I think it would be great uh, if Hasbro owns sub, all of Saban's properties, which I, I think they do. Then they have the rights to Mast Rider, and that would be awesome. Uh, and also, I could see a Mast Rider movie maybe doing better than a series because the series didn't really catch on the same way as Power Rangers. And, but there also isn't as much baggage for the American audience. You could just have any Common Rider movie redubbed or make a whole new one just using the property. So I, I would like to see that. I, I think that's a good theory. I hope you're right, Immortal Red Fox. Uh, and I would like to see it start off in movie form myself. Let's see. Mortal Red Fox, because if it's a... Uh, oh, actually, I missed. Uh, Matt Kendall Claire, Gaz's Defender impression was funny. <laughs> I was waiting for me to make a joke about liking Overdrive. Uh, you know... I, that's no joke. I mean, he has his preferences. I'm not a big Overdrive fan. A lot of people don't love Overdrive, but, you know, the big dog, he, I'm sure he's going to be wanting to talk to Dwayne Cameron more than anybody else, you know, because that's, that's his guy. That's that's Overdrive. Um, let's see. Immortal Red Fox, because if it's a Go Buster type look, I see it crossing over. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, one of the things with the crossovers, from my understanding, a lot of the crossovers, people say, why don't they use the Sentai footage? And I used to be one of them. But a lot of them happen in the movies. And apparently the deal that Saban, I guess now Hasbro, has inherited doesn't include the movies. They have the rights to the shows, and the movies are a secondary cost. So any crossover that happens in Sentai that isn't in the show directly is an extra cost. And so that's why we don't see a lot because of Moolah. That being said, it doesn't mean it can't happen. Hasbro has been putting more money in. Um, but, yeah, that's where we're at that. So... Let me see. Um, woof, woof, overdrive. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, woof, woof. Stop. No, see, that just seems forced. That I don't even know why. I mean, it, it, Matt said something about overdrive. Overdrive. Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> that wags my tail. Oh, boy. That's, it's just super forced. That's not even funny. Please stop. Please stop. Woof, drive. Over, woof. Stop. Enough. Okay, we're done with that. That is not a good gag. <sighs> All right. Well, let's see. Uh, Immortal Red Fox says, maybe I'm grasping it. Karate bunk men. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Matt Kendall sounded like Yogi Bear there. But, well, I, I didn't, but you're right. The big dog is sounding a little Yogi Bearish. You know, wanting some picnic baskets and all that. Picnic woof woofs. A basket of woof. Overdrive woof. Stop. It wasn't funny. And you're, you're it's getting worse. Just please. Just recover from the dentist and we'll talk again next week after San Diego Comic-Con. All right. That being said, I think we're going to wrap it up. We're at about 45 minutes here. Um, I do thank everybody for stopping by as always. It's a fun little chat. We didn't have the big dog. We didn't have any games. We didn't have a, a episode to review, but we, I think we had a good time and there was a lot of news this week. So that's cool. And like I said, next week, uh, we'll be back a little bit late uh, and we'll be talking about San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, Let's see. Uh, one more thing. Is Novocaine powered up Mortal Red Fox? <laughs> uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and cut to our little credit shot. One day I'll actually have credits. Now it's just the end credits without actual credits, but I should probably one day put text in there when I have time. But for now, uh, what are we saying? We're saying uh, we're power down to the power. I mean, to the power is good, but but that's uh, I'd rather have it be action deactivate. Pa well, let's say action deactivate. For now, I'm Gaz the Gazbot, better known as the Gazbot Knight, for the Big Dog Defender who isn't here this week. Woof, 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 I'm here! Woof, woof, woof! All right. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Credits. Uh -huh.